Welcome to the Tear Talk Podcast with author, coach, and speaker, Mashani Allen. Known as the Golden Scribe, Mashani has over two decades of writing experience, and her passion for the craft has given her the opportunity to impart wisdom, affirmation, hope, and confidence into many. Let's listen now as Mashani delves into topics that have impacted her on her Tear Talk journey and helped her discover the power of the pen. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the Tear Talk podcast. So glad that you all joined on today. This is the week of Thanksgiving. It is also the week of my birthday which is the 22nd of November. My birthday tends to always be, it's very rare that it's not within the week of Thanksgiving. So it always causes me to reflect two ways. First for my life and then with the holiday itself. And as I was considering this podcast on today, I found myself thinking about multiple things. And when it comes to being thankful, sometimes that happens many times after we've experienced a loss or a shakeup or something potentially happening, we can find ourselves being thankful. But when I looked up the definition of the word, I realized, and it's something that I've been trying to posture my heart to be, This is a perpetual state that we should be in. Now, the word thankful is the conscious of benefit received. So it's basically making a decision and a choice to recognize a benefit that has been received. But the thing about the word thankful is thankful is an adjective, which means it's a descriptor. It modifies something else. And it's like you have a thankful heart or you have a thankful demeanor or you have a thankful disposition or you have a thankful spirit. You just have a thankful mind. And I think a lot of times when you meet people who just exude thankfulness, I think you've also met a person who also exudes humility because it's a conscious decision to recognize the benefit or the benefits received. And with us being in the age that we are, sometimes when it comes to being thankful, a lot of times it's for external things or material things, but I really believe that for some, COVID taught us that our thankfulness should be so much more. Every breath that we breathe without pain is something to be thankful for. Every family member that we can pick up the phone and call is something to be thankful for. For those of us who have employment, that's something to be thankful for. For those of us that are loved, that is something to be thankful for. You know, I just experienced with COVID, a lot of people realize that relationships that they thought they had, they didn't have, that hope or foundations that they thought were strong. Some it was, and for some it wasn't. And I think that we have to posture and position ourselves that regardless of what is going on around us, regardless of even what's happening within us, we should always find a way to be conscious of the benefits that we receive on a daily, daily basis to have food, to have transportation, to have health. Health is a huge benefit. And I think when you can always have something, 
or have always had something, you might not see it as a benefit until it's no longer there. But I think that if we consciously live being thankful, whether it's there or not, we can still find a way to give thanks. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, it starts, And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. And I have found for me that most of what I write is from a place of thanksgiving. And I remember, I think I might have mentioned this in a webinar at one point, where I said that I believe that journaling your life is a way of telling God, thank you for your life, because you're taking the time to record. You're taking the time to create a record. You're taking the time to pin what has taken place, what you desire, what you want, what you hope for, what you're praying for, what prayers have been answered. It's it's recording your life. And I think that that is a beautiful and a very simple way to say thank you. It doesn't have to be a lot, but when you make the conscious effort to take note <laughs> of what has happened, what is happening, and what you desire to happen, I believe that is a beautiful expression of saying thank you. And when I think about it, with my birthday, I write every thank you that I receive or happy birthday message that I receive on Facebook. So I always have to make sure that my journal is up to date. And most people don't even know they end up in my journal. But every name of every person who says thank you, not thank you. <laughs> I've been saying thank you this whole time. I keep saying it. Every person that says happy birthday, which in a lot of ways is thanking God for your life, I write their name down in my journal. I record those who take the time to appreciate my life, who take the time to recognize the day, who take the time to write an expression of love. It means so much to me, especially when it's people that I haven't spoken to in years. Some people, that's the first time I've heard from them in forever. It just means so much to me that they take the time to recognize me. And if it means that much to me, <laughs> I can only imagine what it could mean to God when we take the time to recognize the life that we have and the life that has been given to us and we record it. How beautiful is that? That simple expression of love, that simple expression of being thankful for life, how it could move the heart of God. Now, this isn't something that I read and this isn't something that I heard, but it's something that I believe. And I think the reason why I believe it is because when you read the Psalms and you read about David and you read scriptures where he starts off like in the lowest of lows and then he turns into or he makes a conscious decision to see the benefit that he's received and then it becomes a whole in part of thanksgiving. And we see how much us reading that empowers us and encourages us and motivates us. If it does that for us, what did it do when God saw him writing that? And that same expression that he was able to have, not that all of them did that, but many of them did. And I personally see the Psalms as journals. 
the journals of people's hearts, many of them, them expressing where they are, them not sugarcoating their feelings, them, you know, letting God know, hey, I ain't happy about this. Hey, I'm not happy, you know. But then in the middle of their writing, their hearts shift and their hearts turn and they end up in a better place. I believe the same thing for us can happen. But I believe that there is also such a beauty when we allow our pens or our keyboards to capture those moments. And I believe that just as they can move us, they can move him. And it's not something that has to be long. It's not something that has to be drawn out. But it's something that if you're conscious of, you will make more of an effort of it. Like people who are around me, they laugh, they find it hilarious. But I try to explain to people, I don't just, I'm, I'm like a, a, a word photographer. I literally capture words. If I'm having a conversation with you, please know I'm not ignoring you. But if you say something that is meaningful or even I say something that is meaningful, I'm sending myself a text message because I am constantly capturing words. It's like words are like pictures for me. I don't just hear words. I feel words and I have to capture those words. I have to capture that moment. And I know some of y'all are like, my goodness, this is very unique. <laughs> that might not be the word choice <laughs> that you use. <laughs> I'm just being kind to myself. <laughs> But I think that is such a powerful thing because I've been, I've had friends and they've said something and I'll pull it up and I'll say, I remember when you said this and they're like, wow, you recorded that? And then I'm like, remember when this happened and I'll read it because once the moment is gone, there's no guarantee we can get it back. So for me, I don't, I want to capture the essence of all of it. I had a um, very special moment actually at work on Friday. I did something very unique for my birthday this year. I had a thought of how I have written poems for so many people over the years. I've written poems for birthdays, for anniversaries. I've written poems from weddings, for funerals. I've written poems to inspire and to encourage. I've written poems when I've spoken at conferences. I've written poems. I've been writing poems for years. And the thought was you've written poems for everyone, but have you ever written a poem for yourself? And I was like, wow, I, <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't think I have. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever written a poem for myself. So then the idea was to write, four, because I'll be 44, to write 44 truths about myself in rhyme. 44 truths about myself in rhyme. So I've been working on this since I think the idea came in October. No. Yes, the idea came in October. So I would get downloads and I write those down. And then I hear some more and I write those down. And then I remember the poem of inspiration that I had in December of 2016. So I took a few from there, added those. And then on Wednesday, I just was like, I got to get this done before Monday. My birthday on Monday, I got to get it done. So I ended up writing them all down. And I shared them with uh, one of my student workers at work. And he said something that really, really blessed me. And he's going to be shocked when he hears this podcast because I'm going to share it. I let him read them. And then he said, you're standing on fertile ground to have a fruitful harvest. He said, this is pretty amazing. This is pretty amazing. He said, after reading that, he can tell that you know who you are 
you know where you're standing and you know where you're going. So I think that it would be cool if I shared it with you all. I hadn't planned on going in this direction, but since they're sitting here, <laughs> let me read with you 44 truths about me and Ryan. And this is me being thankful for God making me. I am a Berean to my core, always teachable and willing to seek for more. I'm full of treasure, not just from me, but jewels who are willing to look and deeply see. I am a truth speaker, but laced with grace to reveal his truth, character, and face. I am one who has a mighty pen dipped with fervor and fire from within. I am one who is full of joy, but life's journey tries its hardest to destroy. I am now full of wisdom and strength, postured to complete this journey's full length. I'm loving the woman I become. Every day is a reflection of the inner work he's done. I enjoy the distinct sound of my laugh. Loud and boisterous, but a calming saff. I treasure my personal relationship with God. Some say we're like two peas in a pod. <laughs> I'm learning that transparency has a power. It keeps you nice and sweet instead of bitter and sour. I believe my best parts are hidden inside of me. They spring forth like a very well cared for tree. I love the words that come out of me when I speak. It's a fine wine and a matured meat. I have eyes that talk, sometimes more than my mouth speaks. When done in love, it causes others' eyes to water and leak. I'm attracted to spiritual maturity and intellect. Those are whom to which I easily connect. I am like strong black coffee as wisdom drips. It's heavy on the palate, but a refreshing and satisfying sip. I have a unique stature and a distinctive grace, which has matured as I found my ordained pace and race. I have overcome more than people will ever know, but my obedience to stand still and heal is why I have a continual glow. I have an affinity for understanding the purpose and meaning of words. I enjoy being a natural and spiritual nerd. <laughs> I love that I remain childlike with wonder still in my eyes. It's a secret place where my creativity abides. I feel comfortable and what others see as a loss. If it would have happened before now, it would be too high of a cost. What I hold most precious in this season is the state and condition of my heart. Being quick to forgive sincerely is not just a skill, it's an art. My battlefield of the mind has been extensive and great. Life truly tried to present a different outcome and fate. I smile when I think of my future and all that is in store, for I patiently prepared in secret for these divine doors. In my soul is a harvest of precious jewels, silver and gold. For in me, these virtues continue to mature. They aren't stale or old. Within my smile, I break down heart walls by showing kindness and awareness to those great and small. When my lips open, it's like a treasure chest revealed, releasing authority and knowledge with an apostolic seal. My pupils pierce into the heart of a matter and provides counsel which joins together and does not scatter. My feet position me to rule and reign. 
My faithfulness is rewardable. I do not labor in vain. I am a unique creation, one of a kind, his jewel, his friend, his master design. I've learned to embrace the uniqueness of my gifts and use them to encourage and help souls lift. I discover daily the vastness of my mind and the power of keeping my heart pure and genuine. I love that I challenge myself with a mandate to mature. It helps me to stay focused and continue to endure. I'm loving the beauty of my internal reflection. It comes with trust, discipline, and willingness to follow his direction. My pen carries much power and might. It has been pruned and tuned and distributes a great light. I have a heart that's been broken, but mended again. I now guard it with diligence and faithfully nurture and tend. I love my faith moves and the unique adventures I've taken. The integral part they have played in my life cannot be mistaken. I've developed a strength and fortitude I didn't know I could have, but it came through strong perseverance, persistence, and the ability to laugh. My life isn't the picture or design I thought it would be, but I'm thankful and I fully embrace his original intent for me. I stay on a thousand, happy and joyful the bulk of the time, bringing hope and balance to others while enjoying the rewards of being kind. I've divorced religion, judgment, and condemnation. I love love and how that brings true habitation. I'm like a radiant sunflower with my heart always facing the sun, forever thankful and grateful for all he's done. I'm thankful for the freedom and liberty under which my soul abides, free from the opinions of men, haughtiness, and pride. I'm looking forward to 44 and what is in store. I believe it holds my best days, answer prayers, and much, 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 much more. (laughs) So those are 44 truths about me in rhyme. And that was my way of thanking God for 44 years of life. I really do hope that you enjoyed this broadcast and something about it inspired you and that the next time you see that a new podcast has become available, you make the choice and choose to press play. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family and please be comfortable allowing your tears to talk. Thank you for joining the Tear Talk podcast. You can learn more about Mashani by visiting MashaniAllen.com and register for her Power of the Pen for Grief webinar at MashaniAllen.com forward slash classes.